I'm Jim Backus, known as the Greek at Bogart's Restaurant. Personally, I think Victor Askin is a top musician at his age at 20 years old. I foresee him being known throughout, not the United States, overseas, and wherever. someone says, you know, ask me a question anytime, like, you know, I, I always get this kind of look on my face, like, are you serious? Like, you don't know what you're doing. Because, you know, I'm going to ask a lot of questions because if I want to know something, I'm going to find out. And that's like, that's what I do is just learn and, and figure things out. I knew of Victor when he came in because I'm very good friends with the trumpet instructor, Rex Richardson. I know of, uh, you know, every year of the outstanding young trumpet players that Rex brings in, and Victor was one of those. A few times, like, Tony Martucci, he's had, like, uh, like maybe one of his students doesn't show up, they're about to show up late, and I'll just be practicing in the next room, like, hey, you know, get in a second, like, can we play or something like that, can you explain this to me, you know, and we'll just work on something like that. I uh, give him projects uh, to develop uh, a particular uh, theme, he generally chooses the theme, and to write in uh, within certain confines, certain instrumentations and or styles. And we'll focus on certain types of techniques, uh, sometimes with orchestration or harmonic colors in mind, forms. I mean, BCU, it was a, it was a great experience. I mean, I really, I mean, I, I have, I have no, no complaints on my end, really. I, I was able to study with, you know, the best teachers, that I could, and, I, and, I, and, I, and all the teachers I wanted to, you know, um, especially getting to, to study with like Doug Richards, and, like in a, in a private lesson format, especially just being able to have, uh, you know, that's something that's all about possibility. That's, that's really what our lessons are about. It's just, you know, he's not, okay, you know, this is how you write this, or this is how you write this. Like, okay, well, you could do this, or like, maybe you're trying to get from here and get to there, and here's how you could do it, or maybe think about doing this. You know, it's always about possibilities. When I knew I wanted to cut an album, I had been writing the tunes, started getting a sophomore year. By the end of sophomore year, I knew I wanted to like, put out an album at some point. I knew for sure that I wanted Steve Kessler on it. And that was like right before Steve was about to move to Canada. There was a very easy camaraderie between musicians, musically and personally. Uh, we all got along. It was fun. And, uh, I don't know what they're saying, but the different thing was that this was uh, Victor's vision and his tunes. So that, that made it fresh and, and uh, you know, challenging to try to put yourself into a situation where you're taking someone else's music as personally as you take your own. The tunes I write are really, really difficult, and so it requires a lot of focus. I, didn't, I, I never really thought about that because I, I wrote the tunes, so whenever I play them, it's, it's not exactly really difficult because, of course, I know the process of what's happening behind it. But then in the studio, when we had to record the tunes, it was like doing take after take. It was just, it was grueling. I was like, man, this really requires a lot of focus. I never had had like a face in that kind of uh, setting. The only expectation was music above all else. Music above uh, pyrotechnics and music, you know, tech, technical aspects, music above uh, uh, any other consideration. So uh, that was really the only emphasis in my life. I'll go back and listen to the album occasionally now and. Uh, and it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like I'm listening to myself, you know, like when I make a recording of like something I've done, you know, uh, like a demo recording or just a live beat or something like that, then it's like, I, I feel like I'm listening to myself like, okay, oh, I, I did that, you know, I think about you know, not doing this, but in the studio there's just like a really great focus that was there and I, I really kind of thought about everything really well before I, I played it down. I was like, alright, I'm about to put this on, on the CD, what do I want to express? that will be relevant, not just like right now in this moment, but in the future when I listen to it, how will it still be relevant, what I think about it. Honestly, he was one of our first ventures into something else besides, you know, dance music or 
not necessarily dance music, but something you could really, really move to, you know? Um, like even, even Dane Ferguson's like got that upbeat, you know, like ready to go type of music. I feel like that's just the best way that, that jazz music works, is just when people are really close and they have this, uh, just like this intimate connection with the music, you know, physically like right there, face to face with it. Uh, my cousin came in from out of town and was like, what the fuck? This is happening at a house? Like this jazz musician got together with three other people and just put together a group for the night, as far as I am aware. And that's why, that's why I really uh, was digging out the house party was just uh, having people so close and so, and so attentive to what we were doing. Um, and, I, and part of that, of course, is just like, who's at the house party? I mean, that seems like that house, the, the way that uh, the house party series, I guess, uh, works. It seems like everyone's really attentive to when people are performing, right? I've, I've been to others, sort of, uh, seen other bands, a house party situation where people aren't paying attention at all. And it makes a difference when people are paying attention, they're there, and they're with you when you're taking them on this journey. Then it becomes something really great, and the reaction you can hear from people in the video, you know, they're like going crazy. It's like, you know, this is really great. They can really feel what's happening. The first time I saw the picture was um, through some footage that was shot at a house show at the Gene Pool. And uh, it was him with four other musicians, or three other musicians, I believe. It was a little jazz ensemble. And uh, I was immediately intrigued by what he was doing and interested in working with him. So I sent him a message on Facebook and <clears throat> asked if he'd be interested or willing to work with a songwriter or someone, a vocalist of an instrumentalist. And he had a lot of stuff going on, was really busy, and it, the timing didn't really seem to be there, so we didn't get to get together and do anything at that moment. But um, Craig later approached me and asked if I'd be interested in doing like an impromptu on the spot cover with Victor and um, the kind of the premise was that we were just going to meet and play a song together and see how it went and um, when I met him we, we kind of got in the room together, got a feel for each other, tuned up our instruments and kind of played a few chords, figured out what key we were in and then went right off into the song. We did sitting on the dock of the bay and, and we did three takes of it and the first take ended up being the best out of the three which was really interesting. It was kind of cool to to be able to meet someone and have that immediate chemistry. And I think that's just, that's the mark of a good musician. Like you're able to sit in and you feed off of each other and what I didn't do, he complimented, what he didn't do, I complimented him. And it just kind of, it was a great balance between the two of us. And it was really interesting to see how quickly it came together. While I'm improvising, I'm trying to get into the heads of everyone else I'm playing with so we can kind of all be on the same page because that's when really cool, unexpected, special stuff happens on the bandstand. It's like when everyone's in the same frame of mind, we all kind of able to navigate um, the form of the tune in, in, in a similar fashion that makes uh, that makes just something new happen. That's the beauty of improvisation. That's why I really like duo playing is because it's just two people and like the more creative and flexible and, uh, that you are, then the more stuff that can happen. A lot of individuals who uh, have attained his kind of uh, success in a relatively brief time uh, can let that go to their head. He doesn't. He's very, very well grounded. Has to have great genes and a great upbringing. Uh, he doesn't carry an attitude about him outside of the attitude of being very sincere and really wanting to do well. And, you know, that comes with a phenomenal work ethic, too. And uh, he, that is a rarity these days, the work ethic. Regardless of the music school, or VCU or Berkeley or wherever it might be, students still need to go out and find their own voice through all of this. Usually, in most cases, students don't find that until after they've graduated from class, from, from college, and get out in the world and start working through these things. And that's the interesting thing about Victor is I think he's finding it rather, rather early. And you can't learn that stuff in the bandstand in the classrooms. You have to learn it from a, from a master like that, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's a really important part of uh, what I've gotten from VCU is just these like, connections with all these different people. And the scene uh, around Richmond is mostly VCU grads and whatnot, so people are, you know, they're always open to like letting people sit in and, and just like having people learn, you know what I'm saying? There's so many different opportunities around town uh, to go meet people who are graduates of the program who just who want, you know, want to be there for people who graduate from VCU. What sets a great improviser apart from a good improviser is perspective. 
you know, when someone has their own personal voice on their instrument, their own concept. And I think that uh, Vic and I have some affinity in that area, uh, where seeking a uh, personal voice, where we're not afraid to take some traditional music and try to find something creative that's beyond tradition. And at the same time, we're not afraid if we're playing something creative and innovative in its uh, style to reference something from tradition. In other words, everything's on the table musically. And so that's what I hear in, 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 in Victor's playing. And uh, that's how I relate to him as a musician. Now I'm finally done with school, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's just like a, a certain level of relaxation that's, that comes with not being on someone else's watch where you have to, okay, I've got to make sure I'm doing these assignments or showing up for this class or whatever, not having to worry about that. It just allows me to, to finally breathe and do the things I want to do and focus on doing those things. So I'll be finally practicing and, and writing music more, um, or more than I already was. Um, as well as, you know, I'll still be performing around here, but I'll be making more frequent trips up to New York and, and D.C. and like, you know, trying to make, make things happen on those scenes and meet people in, in, in those places because that's, that's uh, certainly something I'm trying to do is just expand you know, the musicians I know and play with. And then on top of that, I'm trying to do some educational things for kids in like high schools and middle schools and trying to go into schools and teach them about jazz and improvisation and inspiring kids and, you know, letting them know, like, you work hard and you're dedicated to do anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm a good example of that. It's not about becoming famous. It's about developing oneself. I think Victor will develop himself throughout his life. And I think he has fundamental talents that in the right circumstances could catapult him in to national slash international recognition. But that's not the important point here. I know it is for PR and universities and all that kind of crap. But Victor is an extraordinary individual who happens to make marvelous music. And that's what he's about. And he'll continue doing that.